Hello and welcome Angular enthusiasts and aspiring developers. Have you ever found yourself deep into building a dynamic survey application only to hit a roadblock when it comes to checkboxes? You are not alone. Today we are diving into a common yet crucial challenge. How do you accurately capture checkbox data in Angular reactive forms? Now before we jump into the nitty gritty of checkboxes and forms, let me introduce myself. I am Ayazafar, a passionate web developer with over 13 years of experience in crafting modern web application using Angular. My journey with Angular began with very first version of Angular and since then I have successfully developed numerous projects, especially focusing on robust from implementations. I have also shared my knowledge through various tutorials helping others to overcome their Angular hurdles. In today's tutorial, we are going to cover everything you need to know about handling checkbox values in Angular reactive forms. Whether you are a beginner or looking to brush up your skills, this tutorial has got you covered. We will start by setting up our environment, then move on to creating and managing checkboxes in reactive forms. I will guide you through binding data to these checkboxes, implementing validators and show you how to work with these their values for practical applications. So whether you are building a survey, a dynamic form or any application where user input is crucial, mastering checkboxes in, in Angular reactive forms is a skill you definitely want to have in your toolkit. Let's get started and unlock the full potential of Angular together. Let's start by demystifying Angular reactive forms. If you are wondering what makes reactive forms a go-to choice for many developers, you are about to find out. Angular offers two approaches to handle forms, template driven and reactive forms. While template driven forms are simpler and more straightforward, reactive forms prov provide a more scalable, reusable and reactive way to handle form inputs, especially in complex scenarios. One of the key advantages of reactive forms is their model driven approach. Unlike the template driven forms where the form logic resides in the template, reactive forms allow you to define the form structure and logic in the component class. This separation gives you more control, makes your forms more testable and simplifies complex form interactions. Now let's see how this works in practice. We will start by setting up a simple reactive form. Imagine we are creating a form for user feedback and we need a checkbox to confirm if user agrees to the terms and conditions. Let me quickly create a piece of code to show you example. First of all, I will create a form tag, a form with a label inside there should be an input and here I will add save it and in the label we have input and in the input I will add type checkbox and in the text place I will add agree to terms and conditions. Okay. Now in the TS file, first of all, make sure to import the reactive form module from the angular slash forms as I'm using standalone component. So I can directly import the reactive form module in my app component. But if you're using app module or you are not using standalone components, then you should import the reactive forms module in the module where your component is declared. Now here I will define a property feedback form is equal to new form group. Okay, and in that I will add a property terms accepted new form control and pass it a default value false. So this form control should be imported from the angular slash forms. Okay, next we need to add form group in square bracket in HTML and then pass it the form that we have created here. So copy the name and paste it like that. Now in the input, add the form control name and give it the same name that you have specified in the form group. So that is terms accepted, put it here. So in this code, you can see how we have set up a form group named feedback form. Inside it, we have created a form control terms accepted initialized with the false representing our checkbox. The beauty of this approach is in its simplicity and flexibility. You can easily manipulate the form state and handle changes reactively. 
which we will explore shortly. So that's your introduction to angular reactive forms. With their powerful and flexible architecture, they are an essential tool for an angular developer. Next, we will dive into setting up your environment and getting hand on with creating your own reactive forms. Now that we have got a grasp on reactive forms, let's roll up our sleeves and start setting up our angular project. Now we will talk about getting your environment ready for working with reactive form. First things first, you will need to have Node.js and Angular CLI installed. If you haven't done this yet, head over to the Node.js website to download and install the Node.js and then install Angular CLI globally using NPM. I also have covered these topics on my YouTube channel so you can go there to learn them from there as well. So let's open the terminal and first thing is that you need to run the command npm install dash g at angular slash cli. With angular cli installed, you can now create a new angular project. So once it is installed, open your terminal or command prompt and run this command that is ng new project name. So this command scaffolds a new angular project named whatever you have specified when prompted choose the options that suit your project needs. So after creating the project, navigate into your project directory by using the cd command like this. So I already have generated my project and it is currently running in my VS code as you saw earlier. So after everything is done, make sure the reactive forms module is imported in your component or in your module. This module is crucial for working with reactive forms. It is essential as it provides all the necessary tools and directives for reactive forms. And there you have it. Your Angular environment is now set up and ready for creating reactive forms. Next, we will start creating our checkbox within a reactive form and see how it all comes together. Now let's dive into how form control and form group play a pivotal role in managing states of our checkbox. In Angular Reactive Forms, form control is a class that tracks the value and validation status of an individual form control like an input or a checkbox. Form group on the other hand is a group of form controls. It lets us manage a collection of form controls, giving us the power to handle the forms state collectively. Now let's put this into practice. We will create a basic checkbox within a form group in our Angular application. For this demonstration, let's continue with the feedback form example. So in this code, we have created a form group named feedback form. So here, instead of having the terms accepted, I will have a different property named subscribed newsletter. And in the text, we will have a different thing. Let me copy paste the name for the label uh, for the form control. And for the text, we will have subscribe to our newsletter. Okay. So in this code, we have created a form group named feedback form like before inside this group, we have a form control subscribe newsletter initialized with the false indicating that checkbox is unchecked by default. Notice how we use the form control name is equal to subscribed newsletter in our template. So this links our checkbox to the form control in our component class, creating a two way data binding. Any changes in this checkbox state are now automatically reflected in our form model. So let me quickly show you the value of this form. So to display all of the values, you can simply use feedback form dot value and pipe it through JSON pipe. Okay, now go to the browser and you will see the JSON in this way. And if you select it, you will see that value will be updated. And just like that, we have successfully integrated a checkbox into our reactive form. This setup not only keeps our code clean and organized, but also gives us immense control over form behavior and validation which we will explore next. Moving forward in our Angular Reactive Forms journey, let's focus on a crucial aspect, binding data to our checkboxes. This step is all about establishing a connection between the form control in our model and the checkbox in our template. Data binding in Angular is a powerful feature that allows us to create interactive forms. Specifically for checkboxes, we use form control name directive. This directive links a form control in our component class to an input or checkbox in our template, enabling two-way data binding. So let's take our feedback form example further. We already have our checkbox for subscribe to newsletter. Now we want to bind it to our form control. We have successfully created and bound our checkbox in Angular's reactive form, but how do we retrieve and handle these values, especially when the form is submitted? 
that's what we will cover in this segment in the reactive forms handling form data including checkbox values is a streamlined process upon form submission angular provides us with a neat package of all form control values including our checkboxes in the forms value object let's enhance our feedback form to handle form submissions we will retrieve the value of our subscribe to newsletter checkbox upon form submission and display it so let's create a new property in the ts file that would say submitted value and type would be any and here i will define a function on submit and within that this dot submitted value is equal to this dot feedback form dot value and you can also console that value like this okay now go to the app dot component dot html and here we add an if condition here like that and here i will add submitted value as the condition if this is true then we will display the content within that we, i will add a div here that div will have a paragraph submitted value and we will display the submitted value and use the json pipe with that okay now on the top in the form tag i will add an event submit and we will pass call the function on submit that we just defined in our ts file okay in the html file we also have to add the submit button and the type should be submit okay now hit the submit button and you can see that submitted value is subscribed newsletter is true if you uncheck it and submit it again you will see the false value so in this code we have added the on submit method in our component this method is triggered when the form is submitted inside this method we are capturing the forms value which includes our checkboxes state and assigning it to the submitted value we are also logging it to the console for demonstration that you can see in the inspect element here like that okay when you submit the form you will see the value of our checkboxes in the console and displayed on the ui this simple method shows how you can capture and use checkbox values in your angular applications handling checkbox values in reactive forms is the straightforward so whether you are dealing with a single checkbox or multiple ones angular makes it easy to capture and utilize their state in your form logic as we delve deeper into the angular reactive forms it's crucial to address the validation of checkbox inputs validation ensures that data provided by the user meets the certain criteria before processing it further especially for checkboxes you might want to validate whether they are checked or not based on your form's requirement in some cases like agreeing to terms and conditions or opting into newsletter it's essential to validate that checkbox is checked before allowing the user to proceed so let's implement a custom validator for our subscribe to newsletter checkbox so this validator will ensure that checkbox is checked before form can be submitted so let's go back to the ts file and i will create a custom validator function must be checked validator and the return type would be validator fn make sure to import this from here from the angular slash forms and now here i will return the function with that will receive a parameter control abstract control and the return type of this function would be key string any okay or null now here we will check we will return that if control dot value is null uh, is to the then return null otherwise return not checked and value control dot value okay oops control dot value okay now here i will pass a second parameter and here you can specify the custom validator like that and now i will display you feedback dot form dot valid and use the pipe json save it right now you can see it is false as soon as you make it true it will become uh, as soon as you select the value it will become true okay so now we can use this validation to disable our submit button so like you can add a directive disabled and pass it feedback form dot valid and pass it not in front of it so if it is invalid then it will make it keep it disabled right now you can it is disabled as soon as you make it uh, you select the checkbox then it will become enable like this okay so in this code we have defined a custom validation function must be checked validator this function checks if the controls value is true that is che the checkbox is checked if not checked it returns an error object otherwise it returns null so indicating that the validation 
passed. With the validator attached to our checkbox control, the form will now indicate an error if checkbox is unchecked. This is essential for scenarios where user consent or agreement is required. Adding custom validator like this one enhances the robustness of your forms, ensuring that the data collected is valid and reliable. Other than that, you can use the ready-made validator as well if you don't want any customization like we have the custom error message. You can add a custom error message as well here. So you can just get rid of that. And instead of that, pass an array and use validators dot required. So in this way, you can pass multiple validators. And now let's see actually validators dot required. Instead of using required, in the case of checkbox, it requires the required true validator that will work that okay now you can see that submit button is disabled and uncheck it will make it enable the skills you have learned today are not just limited to checkboxes they form the foundation for handling various types of inputs in angular projects equipping you with the knowledge to build dynamic and robust web applications if you have found this tutorial helpful i would love to hear about your experiences and any challenges you have faced drop a comment below your feedback is invaluable and if you are new here don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more angular content there is a lot more to explore and i am here to guide you through it